Welcome back to This Is Jax. I'm Nate Riggs. I'm your host. Thanks for tuning in. I've got a special episode for you this week. Today, it's just me in the studio. I'm going to be going through some of the questions that I like to ask our guests. These are some of my favorite questions, and I'm going to ask them to myself, and I'm going to share my answers with you. It gives you an opportunity to get to know me a little bit more, uh, kind of see what I'm interested in and why I have such a passion for the city of Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome to This Is Jax, a hyper-local podcast. We're going to do our best. We're going to bring on successful business owners, the people who drive the cities, share a lot about what makes our city so great. So you can be confident and comfortable. This is a city that you want to call home. Let's dive right into it. It's a little bit different episode. Like I said, no guests today, just me. Let's get to know each other a little bit more. If Jacksonville were a chapter in your life's book, what would the title be? And why? Hmm. For me, this is kind of a tough question, actually, because I think I would need two chapters. I would need more than one. I came to Jacksonville my freshman year of college. I didn't really know about Jacksonville at all. I grew up in South Florida and then kind of moved around a little bit, which we'll talk about later. But when I think about Jacksonville, I think about those early years, right? I was out on my own basically for the first time. So it would have to be coming to Jacksonville part one, the early years, right? This is me kind of just, I don't want to say becoming a man or, or a coming of age or growing up, but I do want to say just like figuring out life, right? Who I was going to be, what I was going to be, how I was going to handle certain situations. This was, this is where it started for me. Now in the early years, we didn't have uh, iPhones, right? Or um, MacBooks that had Google Maps or anything like that, if we wanted to go somewhere, first of all, we had to know about the place through word of mouth. And then we had to look it up on MapQuest. And we had to find somebody with a printer so we could print out the directions. And it took like two people, right? Because you needed a co-pilot to read the directions off to you as you went there. So I didn't really get outside of the UNF bubble. I knew about Town Center because it was right across the street. Butler Boulevard or 202 and I-295 at the time was Jonathan uh, Butler Boulevard still, but then it was 9A and this major express uh, interchange that we have today didn't exist. It was actually a traffic light. So just to kind of let you know, my world was, my world was like much smaller. It was like a zoomed in older versions of Jacksonville. And so we made it to the beach every once in a while. But I remember even one trip when I flew out of town, going up to the airport was like, wow, that's really far. Today, I realized from UNF, it's like 15 minutes away, okay? But I was a lot younger. My world was a lot smaller. So that's definitely the early years. Part two would be the growth years, right? That's This is the part where, like, I became the man I am today. I had decided to stay in Jacksonville. I made some career changes, actually joined the Navy, was a search and rescue swimmer, so was stationed at NAS Jacks at this time, which was pretty cool, flying around Jacksonville from the sky, first of all. At 500 or 1,000 feet, I got to see a bird's eye view of the city. So I really saw how massive the city was um, during that time period in my life. And it's also, you know, a lot of my story is there. I got married for the first time. I had a kid. Got divorced, right? Got married again. Had more kids. Now I've got four kids today. And we bought two different homes in Jacksonville. Moved from one side of the city to the other. So definitely experienced it a lot. So first part would be... You know, the younger years, second part would definitely be a story of growth. Second question, can you share an only in Jacksonville moment or experience that really encapsulated the spirit of the city for you? I have one. This just happened recently. I did my first Gate River run. It's a 15K. I know there's lots of 15Ks. I know there's Boston Marathon. There's all these other events. I was looking at one in Vegas and some different things. So as far as only in Jacksonville, I know other cities have their their different races and their athletic events, right? But the Gate River Run, it's here. It's in Jacksonville. You start downtown at the stadium. You go across the Main Street Bridge. You go all throughout. And then that last mile to mile and a half is up the Heart River Bridge, the Green Monster, as they call it. And it's insane. The coolest part about it, though, was as you're running through, you get to see all, you you run through several different neighborhoods from downtown to these waterfront communities to nicer places and, and not the nicest places, but there's people. There's people from our city 
lining streets. They they don't they might know someone in the race, but some of them don't. They just come out to hang out and have a good time. There's bands every mile or so set up playing live music. It was just probably the coolest experience I've had so far. And it, it I, I couldn't help but think while I was running that race, I was like, man, I love my city. I love the people that turned out. I love seeing the streets. I love the views. I love it all. I couldn't I couldn't help think that. I was doing it. So if you're in Jacksonville and you want to see Jacksonville, at least from like a culture perspective, sign up for the Gate River. Listen, and let me be clear here. I'm not a big time runner. All right. I uh, I know I've done some athletic things in my life, but running, not one of my things. I had a buddy who messaged me and was like, do you want to do this Gate River run? I'm not going to say no. So I signed up without really knowing what it was. And in three weeks, went from not running at all to running 9.3 miles in a 15K. So if I can do it, so can you. Sign up for it. See the city firsthand. I'm going to get into question three. This is a, a pretty interesting question for me. Looking back on your first year in Jacksonville, if you could create an event or a tradition that celebrates a city, what would that look like? And who would it celebrate? <clears throat> the who part is kind of interesting. Uh, when you start asking people to go a little bit, it's like taking the question to the next level. It's like, hey, you know, what's a memory? What's a core memory of our city? Uh, but who do you celebrate, right? So this really allows guests to think creatively about how they would contribute to the city's, you know, communal life, their vision of civic engagement. And, and they can honor local figures of values. My first memory, definitely, coming to UNF, as a freshman, December 2006, I went somewhere else first semester, but we'll talk about that later. Came here, and the first thing I remember was the college national football championship game, and it was the Ohio State Buckeyes and the UF Florida Gators. Tim Tebow, a lot of you know the outcome. Another OSU getting blown out in a championship game, right? Now, I got family from Ohio. My dad's family's from Southern Ohio. We even lived in Columbus, Ohio for a little bit from after I moved from Titusville, Florida to Columbus, back down to Tampa Bay. <clears throat> so I'm familiar with the Ohio State Buckeyes, familiar with Florida Gators both, right? So I kind of am, mm, maybe at this point in my life, still kind of pulling for that Ohio side. That was kind of a more recent time period in my life. And also I was there during those middle school years, which tend to be your development, I think, if you're getting into sports, just when you start you know, playing on the travel baseball team or trying out for different sports or you're old enough that your dad and his friends invite you to go to a Buckeye game and, and you go, right? So you you just naturally build that uh, support for the team. So I was kind of bummed at the time to see Ohio State lose. I would say today I wouldn't really care. And I'm definitely interested in the Florida Gators. Really, I'm a hometown kind of guy. They're the closest college team. So if I'm going to drive, get in the car and go to a game, that's where it's going to be, right? Um, but anyway, the person I would celebrate would, would be Tim Tebow, right? It's really the only thing I remember from that year. And Tim Tebow has gone on to live an exceptional life. He's a great guy. He's definitely somebody we can all look up to, right? And he's like a local hero, a local guy. When I see him on TV, whether he's announcing football or whether he's, you know, speaking at a, a local church or at one of his foundation events, I really am proud to say like, hey, that's a person from Jacksonville. And He's not the only guy from Jacksonville like that, but going back to my memories, right? The opportunity is there for you to grow up in the city, to raise children in the city, and they can have local heroes, uh, local role models, and they can follow in other local, you know, civil, civic, civil servant type peoples, and they can have a great life, right? So I'm always proud of that, proud of Tim. There we go. So those are... You know, three questions I like to ask. Go a little bit deeper. Let's let's unpack what it is about Jacksonville that you really love, that really made you decide to dig your roots and stay here, start your business, or or run for mayor, or whatever it be. You decided to dig into Jacksonville, and I want to know why. These questions really helped me get there. Crafted not to just get a great response on why you would want to move or live here, but you know, they, they tap a lot into the emotional and, and cultural uh, resonance of the city. So I'd love to share it with you. I hope you enjoyed this episode, listening to me talk about uh, more reasons why I love Jacksonville.